I came to America in 1948 from Holland after the Holocaust and uh, there were very few apartments available. So finally my father found an apartment at 215 Audubon Avenue on the sixth floor and lo and behold, who lived on the first floor? Helen Moses. Our path crossed because starting in high school we both went to George Washington High School and our path continued that way because we worked at a hotel uh, for three years in the Catskills in the summer. She was a, uh, a counselor and I was the lifeguard. And then we both went to work for the same company. Uh, while I was working at Associated Metals and Minerals Corporation where Helen was a secretary, uh, I joined the six months program for the Army. After I got out of the Army, uh, we got married in June of 61. And right after that, Mr. Khrushchev decided to build a wall between East and West Germany. And Kennedy, President Kennedy, called up 250,000 reservists. And I was one of those. So after three months of marriage, I went off to Fort Lee, Virginia. Luckily, uh, we were an all New York unit. And there were four Orthodox Jews. This is all a political move. Let's go to New York, pick up the women, and live together here. And that's what we did. We lived in a two-bedroom apartment on 1919 Chuckatuck Avenue in Petersburg, Virginia, uh, with this other couple who had a child, a one-year-old child who is now a grandmother herself. Well, luckily, um, I was able to get a job at a TV, the local TV station, making $43 a week. And uh, I was like a girl Friday. The name of the TV show was Jolly for Dollars. And when the permanent lady was not there, they substituted me. So that was a lot of fun, quite interesting. Jolly for Dollars. We kept our apartment in Washington Heights, which was a very small apartment. Shortly thereafter, we had our first child, uh, Paul. An important part of that Virginia thing, and it shows you how sometimes God has a hand in things. Arno Shalema, who we lived with, was working at Phillip Brothers, but he got me into Phillip Brothers. So I always had a great Hakura Sato for Arno. Muncie at that time was a community of Kippah Swaga and non-Jews. We moved into Muncie in, the ninth, in June of 1973. We became immediately members of Rabbi Tenler Shul, Community Synagogue of Muncie. Raising our children there was phenomenal. There was so much freedom. You didn't have to worry. They went across the street by themselves. They walked down to their friends by themselves. Our backyard was a baseball field, a soccer field, a hockey field. And uh, the kids have good memories of Muncie. I was the MC at his 50th anniversary. I knew him well more than, I was his lifeguard in the Catskills. So the, my opening line was that uh, I saved, I was guarded his life for three years. He guarded my soul for 45 years. One thing about Rabbi Tendler, he never hesitated to give an answer. If you had a question, or anyone had a question, he knew that he, imme he immediately gave you an answer. Baruch Hashem, wherever the Vasquez are, they honor their community, and community therefore decides to honor them back. Let me just quickly tell you my relationship with the Ratzkers. Most likely, my closest friend, Tashuch, we say at the beautiful fish pond in the Ratzka property, finish the afternoon with a, a bocha and a cookie, the development of a friendship that Baruch Hashem has been a source of great Nachas and pleasure, especially when you see the Ratzkers and the, the Dr. Paul Ratzker with his children sitting in their spot. You know that this is the dream of every total oriented family. May Kodesh Bochu continue to watch over them. May they be Zolche, Tarif Asyomim, and much Nachas, at Bias Gol Sedek, Ome. Asha was run by Rabbi, Rabbi Michelle. He was the creator of Asha. And uh, at that time, for us, it was a super modern school compared to Breuer's in Washington Heights. We got involved because our kids went there and you had to be involved. I became involved in the women's division and subsequently became uh, president of the women's division. And we worked hard we, for nickels and dimes, not like now where people go after thousands and millions. 
all my three boys went to MTA, which is the Yeshiva University High School, and therefore I got involved, and uh, together with Jack Bentheim, who was the chairman, I served as the vice chairman, and then today, speaking to Richard Joel the other day, MTA has grown and become very, very successful, also because there's a shortage of day schools. And my association with Sharon Tzedek, by the way, is, um, came across because of Phillip Brothers, because um, uh, Sharon Tzedek was on the verge of bankruptcy on Jaffa Road back in the 60s. And when I got involved, it was an 18-bed hospital serving 100 people on Jaffa Road. And I believe in 1978, we moved to Bayat Vagan. After 55 years of involvement, not because of me, is a thousand bed hospital, is the largest hospital in Jerusalem, has 23,000 births a year, and is opening up a new department every month. I, I would be, be glad to say to anybody who wants to listen that the rise of that hospital is due to a large extent to Professor Yonatan Alevi. Dear Helene Menno, congratulations for this evening being honored by your shul. If I wanted to sum up my relationship with uh, Helene Menno, I should say, after 30 years of running Shari Sedek Medical Center in Jerusalem, that one of the main assets that I acquired during these 30 years is the friendship with you. An occasion ready to congratulate you in uh, good health you, yourself, the children, and the grandchildren. And uh, I salute for continued uh, friendship for many, many years to come. So it has been a major, major asset, and it's a great privilege for me to congratulate you tonight. Mazal tov. My name is Rachel Wolf, and I'm the CEO of the American Committee for Shari Tzedek Medical Center in Jerusalem. I first had the privilege of meeting Menno when I started working for the American Committee 16 years ago. From that first moment, Menno has been my mentor, my teacher, and most of all, my friend. You know, most organizations dream of having a lay leader like Menno. He's passionate, he's detail-oriented, he's driven, and quite simply, he gets the job done, not only on time, often early. I know just how much passion and heart and soul Menno puts into everything he does for the organizations that he cares about. And Shari Tzedek and the young Israel of Bell Harbor have undoubtedly been the beneficiaries of his incredible, incredible talent. Mano, I'm so thankful for all that you do for Shari Tzedek and to the larger Jewish community. Thank you so much and Mazel Tov. I'm also very proud that my kids have followed to what I tried to teach them and they're involved in Chesed work. As you, uh, Malki and Paul are very active in the Kushner Academy. Uh, all my three boys are founders of Shari Tzedek, which means they gave each a minimum of $25,000 and continue to be supporters. Uh, Paul sometimes goes into the surgery department, the neurosurgery department of Shari Tzedek. Hello, members of the Young Israel of Bell Harbor, and welcome to the annual dinner. Jake, a little bit louder. Right, I forgot. Hello, members of the Young Israel of Bell Harbor, and welcome to the annual dinner. We're here in Livingston wishing Opie and Safta, as we call them, the biggest mazel tov. Congratulations on an honor well deserved. You're the most amazing parents, grandparents, and we couldn't think of a couple that's more deserving of this honor. Mazel tov to Opie and Safta. I think this is a really well deserved honor, and I love you guys so much. Mazel tov, Opie and Safta. As the newest ranch girl, I'm so excited and honored to be part of your family. I'm so happy that I got to see the shul, and it's beautiful. Congratulations. I really want to just wish you Mazel tov. This is such a deserving award. What you've done for the shul, from what it was and now, and from now what it is, is truly unbelievable. And I love you so much. You and Safta are the best grandparents. Um, mazel tov. Mom and Dad, um, since uh, basically I was born, you two have always been involved in charitable endeavors, whether it was Ashar, Community Synagogue of Muncie, Ashar Tzedek, of course. And you've inspired me and the whole family here, and it's really carried now down to the next generation. And hopefully that type of uh, communal involvement in charitable work will continue down the line. And lastly, we all know how well my grandfather handles complaints, so please, no one be shy. Do not hesitate if something bothered you tonight, if the lighting was off, if the food didn't taste good. Please don't hesitate to complain to him. He'd love to hear it. <laughs> Mazel, Mazel tov. Tov. Hey, it's Carly. 
of being Safta's favorite grandchild here in Madrasha Moria in Yerushalayim. Um, I just wanted to wish you the biggest mazel tov. I wish I could have been there. So I just wanted to say that I love and miss you guys so much and there's no one who deserves this more than you. Michael and Dorit were very much involved in Mariah and Dorit's involved in Ramaz. Menno and Helen's involvement in charitable causes extends well beyond the confines of Bal Harbor. Their commitment to Jewish causes serves as a great example to their children and grandchildren. Good evening, young Israel of Bal Harbor. It's so great to be here with you tonight and celebrate these wonderful honorees. What a beautiful sanctuary you have here. It's quite an improvement from the previous location, though I must say I do miss the convenience of going to shul, making a deposit, getting a cup of coffee, and picking up my photos, all within one hour. We are so proud of Safta and Abi for their involvement in the shul, not to be confused with the shul. My grandparents have always stressed the importance of being involved in various Jewish causes. They believe that strengthening our shuls, schools, and other organizations is critical for Jewish continuity and pride. The following are some of the reasons why our grandparents became involved in the shul. One, Uppy wanted a big presidential seat. Two, they couldn't say no to Jack the Pitbull Glock. Three, it was a way for Uppy to get interviewed on JM and the AM. Four, my softer wanted Uppy to find his distraction so that he wouldn't keep joining her on her shopping excursions to Kosher Kingdom. Even more important than the physical structure are the spiritual and emotional improvements that came with moving into the new building. There is a sense of pride, unity, and community that can be felt every time we enter the shul. For us, I suppose, the number one reason for Uppi and Safta's devotion to young Israel is to show us how a few individuals can impact many present and future lives. L'chaim, to Chaim. Stephanie's involved in Hillel here on, in Aventura. Mazel tov, Uppi and Safta. Uppi. I want to reiterate what I said at my bar mitzvah. I think they're doing a great job at president. Don't let don't let them tell you otherwise. Mazel tov, Uppi and Safta. Safta, it's so nice seeing you at the Kiddush serving meatballs, although they don't come close to yours. Yours are the best ever. Mazel tov on this well-deserved honor. You are both a great inspiration to us for all you do for our shul and our community. Mom, you are an amazing role model for all you do for the Shul Sisterhood. We love you both, and we are so happy to be part of this special night. Mazel tov, Mom and Dad. You've been involved in different charities since I was born, and years later, you're still involved with many of the same ones. It's been amazing living here in the 33154 with you and seeing how instrumental you were with getting the Shul built. And Dad, it was especially touching at Kyle's Bar Mitzvah when I had my Aliyah to see you sitting up there next to the Aaron as president while Kyle was standing on the bima laning his Parsha in the Torah in which you and Mom generously donated in memory of Uncle Martin. Mazel Tov! I think grandchildren are the gift that keeps on giving. From the time that Zach was born here when Paul was a resident in, uh, in Jackson Memorial uh, both his boys were born here. Um, until now, when we have, thank God, ten, ten grandchildren, each of them a jewel, each of them a lot of fun, and there's just no substitute for family. That's why Pesach, Sukkot, anytime I can get together with them, I love it. Uh, uh, Helen is called Safta, and I'm called Opi. Why am I called Opi? Because in German, grandfather is Opa, but when my boys were born, my father-in-law was still alive. So he was Opa, so we had to make a differentiation. So I became OP, and I just adopted that. That was fine with me. Very thankful to God uh, for giving us our children and our grandchildren. We hope to march down some weddings still. Uh, we marched down Zach's, but we're looking forward to the others. When we had our 50th wedding anniversary, we decided we didn't want to do a party. And I came up with the idea, let's do a roots tour. And I uh, decided it would be a good history lesson for all the kids and the grandchildren to go see where Menno was underground. Teen Ray here was the last place we were at and we wound up at a farm owned by the Fultz family. Before that, however, we were helped by Harry Dietz and his family and stayed with them for some time. Mr. Dietz, is with us today so we can all personally thank him. 
all these families, such as Mr. Dietz, the Pope's family, and the other 14 family who hit us, and especially Nico Doman and Hannah van der Poort, took enormous risks by being part of the resistance. If caught, they would have been sent immediately to a concentration camp, or worse, shot on the spot. So I am here today to thank you for your ancestors and what you did during an extremely difficult and dangerous time. My parents, who are no longer with us, survived because of people like you. Now look before you and see what Mr. Dietz, Nico, and Hannah accomplished. There are now 18 of us. Good morning, Uppy. Thank you for coming to be interviewed for Names and Numbers. Please tell us your name. My name is Menno Ratzka. I was born in 1938 in Amsterdam, Holland. I never really got to school because in 1940 the Nazis came in. My mother was a housewife and my father was a trader in chemicals. Life of Jews was very good in Amsterdam until the Nazis marched in in 1940, but even then life continued fairly regularly. But from 1940 to 1942, the Nazis made life for Jews very, very difficult. So uh, we went underground. And going underground meant you, give, you gave up everything, all your assets, all your belongings, your whole life. Uh, you had to have a different passport. The underground had, had room for 20 families, but we were the only ones that went. The underground arranged it for us to get from place to place. Well, we were in 14 different farms or stores in, in little towns. We slept in um, fake wood piles. We slept behind closets. We slept in chicken coops. We slept with horses. Uh, and many times we slept just out in the woods. My message to your generation is that you should always remain Jewish. You should always remember that you are Jewish. You're not an American. You're a Jewish person. And we're not safe anywhere. The message is that if you get involved, get involved and do the work. It's uh, nice to have the prestige of whatever you're doing, whether it's uh, whatever it is, you know, a treasurer, so on and so forth. But you have to do the work. I have to tell you that I've dabbed in a lot of shoes in my life, but even to this day, and I've, we've been there now two years roughly, when I go in there and I look around, I find it an unbelievable place to daven. Jack Luck is mainly responsible, and I always tell that to people, but I had my share in it, especially in the raising of the, of the funds. To quote Tevia, it's no shame to be the president of a shul, but it's no great honor either. It's satisfactory to do the work, it's satisfactory to be the president. You have to take a lot of criticism. Luckily, I can share it, so Jack takes, takes half of it. He gets half of it, so we, we have a good arrangement. And I like working with the rabbi. He's, he's, he's very, very nice, very cooperative, very, very smart. Since I don't work anymore, it gives me something to do. Definitely. 